successful speculator, you got to hit them where they ain't. Uh, you got to buy assets that are unloved. You can't get an asset that's loved cheap. And so in terms of sentiment, silver is where uranium was. Right. And, you know, silver has, I find, a really dedicated base, but also a group of people who have faced so much pain. And we had that hope at the beginning of the year with the silver squeeze that's kind of dwindled off. For you, would you say that's kind of still going on? It's just the beginning and, and we'll see it rise again? I think we will see the real silver squeeze in front of us. The silver squeeze that we saw was very interesting. And I got to say, I was taken by surprise by the amount of physical silver that was bought by newcomers to the silver market. Uh, it was incredible to see the amount of silver that they bought. But that isn't what the real silver squeeze is about. The, the real silver squeeze is simply about the market share of precious metals returning to their historic means. It's about university pension funds, uh, state pension funds, and insurance companies uh, going from having no precious metals in their asset boards to having two or three percent uh, in precious metals. When that happens, Charlotte, and I really think it's when, not if, uh, when demand for precious metals merely returns to the prior means, uh, I think then you see demand for precious metals triple. We may have seen as a consequence of the silver squeeze, uh, a, a 10 or 12% increase in demand for silver in the United States, you know, relative to supply on float. I think we're gonna see demand triple. Uh, that's 300%, not 10%. And when you have a 300% increase in demand with no concomitant increase in supply, because you can't increase supply that much, uh, the price action can be very, very dramatic. So I think that the silver squeeze that we saw was an interesting phenomenon. It tells us that the way the world invests and speculates is changing. The information doesn't need to come from Chase Bank or the Wall Street Journal. It can come from Charlotte McLeod. There's distributed information and distributed response. That was the message of the silver squeeze. But in terms of its impact on the silver market, there wasn't much. What will make a difference in the impact on the silver market is when we get away from the Reddit crowd and we go to, uh, you know, Ontario municipal employees, <laughs> uh, you know, TIA, CREF, the biggest institutional investors in the world, when they begin to return to precious metals markets, as they had to do as responsible investors in the latter part of the 70s, I think then you see the real silver squeeze. Okay, all right, certainly that sounds exciting. Let's now move over to uranium, which is another market of a lot of interest to our audience here. Maybe we can pick up on some of the things that you were saying as we talked about silver. What are the lessons that we can learn from uranium so far, how we've seen the market move? Maybe there's a, there's a contrarian takeaway here that investors shouldn't forget. There's absolutely a message there. When you and I were talking about it three years ago, when it had to go up, when it had to go up, nobody cared because people didn't have the psychological verification of an increasing market. They didn't have the courage of their convictions. You and I talked, Charlotte, about the fact that silver was priced at, pardon me, uranium was priced at $20 a pound and that the total cost of production worldwide was between $50 and $60 a pound, meaning either that the price of uranium had to go up to a level at which the industry earned its cost of capital, or the reactors would shut down and the lights would go out. Those were the two choices. What was most likely? Well, pretty obviously the lights would stay on, the price would go up, and that's what happened. When the narrative became substantiated by price action, uh, as the sector became less attractive because it became more attractive, ironically, it attracted more people. People were more willing to buy uranium stocks after the prices had risen fourfold than they were before the, the prices had risen fourfold. I'm in an interesting place for, with uranium here. Uh, having been early, I've been a reasonably good seller of the juniors. Uh, it seems to me that most, if you took the junior uranium stocks as a basket, 
that on an economic point of view, a non-narrative point of view, they're discounting $60 uranium in a $45 world, which is to say they're ahead of themselves. At the same time, I believe that the uranium price now over the next two or three years, I can't tell you when, escalates from its current $45 a pound to $70 or $75 a pound because the cost of producing uranium is increasing with inflation and with permitting difficulties. So over two or three years, I think as an example, this sounds like a commercial, it probably is. If you bought the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust today at $45 a pound, in three years from now, it's likely selling at 70 or 75, maybe more. A pretty good, you know, pretty attractive rate of return for something that uh, is much more likely than not to happen. I think the biggest and finest uranium stocks in the world uh, probably double, maybe triple. I think the outlook for the juniors is more mixed. Uh, our database has 69 uranium companies in it now. Most of them, unfortunately, don't have any uranium. They're looking for some. And if the price of something that you don't have any of goes up, <laughs> one wonders why that might affect your fortunes. So you need to be picky in the uranium stocks. And it wouldn't surprise me to see the juniors decline a little bit in price, as in fact, they've been doing after the last 45 days. I think the whole sector trades higher. Uh, I think if people are willing to buy the stocks selectively now, two years from now, two and a half years from now, those are the timeframes I think in, they'll probably be very happy. But most speculators think in two or three month timeframes. Uh, and those people I think are bound to be disappointed. So uranium would be very, very, very good to me as it has been over the next two or three years. It will be somewhat less good to people who don't have the courage of their convictions and don't have the psychological and financial staying power to handle the perturbations. The lesson is, if you're going to invest in cyclical industries, you have to be a contrarian. And to be a contrarian, you have to look for things that are out of favor and unloved and have to go up. And you have to be willing to do it without the psychological reinforcement of rising prices. What you need to do is buy something when everybody hates it and you feel bad about it and sell something when everybody loves it and you feel good about it. And it's very tough to do if you aren't 68 years of age. Right. Yeah. 